The SELECT statement allows you to perform queries on a relational database. In other words, you can display a subset of the columns and the records in a table, or indeed a group of tables. The syntax of the SELECT statement is shown here. It begins with the word SELECT, followed by a list of column names, separated by commas. The FROM clause allows you to specify the table being queried, and the optional WHERE clause allows you to specify which records to display by means of a logical expression. Without a WHERE clause, all records will be displayed. Let's see some examples. The table we're going to select data from is shown here. When this SELECT statement is executed by the database, this is the result. The SELECT statement specifies a list of columns to display. There's no WHERE clause, so all 12 records from the original table are being retrieved. This example illustrates that columns can be displayed in any order. In the original table, first name comes before last name, and date of birth comes before children, but they're presented in a different order in the result set. Again, no WHERE clause means that all of the records are being displayed. Note that SQL is not case sensitive. In the original table, the column names are in mixed case, but they've been written in lowercase in the SELECT statement. This is also perfectly valid, but you'll probably find SQL easier to read if you write the keywords in capitals. Suppose for a moment that some of the column names in the original table contained spaces. Then it would be necessary to enclose column names within square brackets when writing an SQL statement that included them. Here you can see a column name alias being used. It has no impact on the query results per se, it simply changes the column name in the result set. In this example, an asterisk is being used to specify that all of the columns from the original table should be shown in the results. With no selection criteria specified, this means that the result set contains the same data as the original table. This example makes use of the optional WHERE clause. Records are being selected only if the gender column contains an M. Notice that the criterion M is written in single quotes. This is necessary for text criteria, but not for numeric criteria. Many database management systems allow you to use double quotes instead of single quotes, but this isn't standard SQL. If you're writing an application that sends SQL statements to a database, the program code will be easier to write and easier to understand if the SQL commands contain only single quotes. As well as not being case sensitive, SQL isn't layout sensitive either. For example, the same SQL statement could be written on one line like this. This example also makes use of the WHERE clause. Records are being selected if the gender is F. This time, the gender column is not displayed in the result set because it isn't specified in the column list. Nevertheless, selection criteria can still be applied to this column. The WHERE clause can make use of logical operators and relational operators. In this example, the SELECT statement is retrieving records where the gender is M and the number of children is greater than or equal to 3. If you're a programmer, you'll be familiar with complex logical expressions like this. They're used in selection and iteration constructs. Logical operations have an order of precedence when combined. The NOT operation has a higher precedence than AND, which has a higher precedence than the OR operation. In this example, any people born in the USA who have only one child will be found, along with all of the people with three children, regardless of their place of birth. Parentheses can be added for clarity. Parentheses can also be used to dictate the order of precedence of logical operations. This time, the OR operation is applied before the AND operation. 
Here, the not operator is being used to completely invert the meaning of the expression. By the way, if there were any people born in the USA with, say, two children, this expression would have found them. Both MySQL and SQL Server have a default date format that displays the year as four digits, followed by two digits for the month, then two for the day, as you can see here. Behind the scenes, dates are essentially numbers, so relational operators, such as less than and greater than, can be used to find all of the dates before or after a particular date. This example illustrates the use of the between operator, a handy way to specify numeric values within a particular range. Note the need for single quotes around date values when specifying them in the default format. SQL allows you to perform queries that require fuzzy matching. The keyword like and the percentage symbol are used together to achieve this. The WHERE clause of this SELECT statement specifies that records in which the last name starts with a V should be found. This WHERE clause specifies that records in which the last name ENDS with an E should be found. And this one specifies that all records with a letter A followed immediately by a letter N anywhere in the last name should be found. Wildcards can be particularly powerful when you're looking for a pattern of characters such as a street name within an address. By default, a SELECT statement will return records in the order that they appear in the original table. In this case, the records are in order of ID, both in the original table and in the query results. Nothing new here. However, an ORDER BY clause in the SELECT statement can be used to change the order of the records in the result set. This ORDER BY clause returns the records in descending numerical order of children. This slight modification returns the results in ascending numerical order of children. If an ORDER BY clause is used with neither ASK nor DESK, the default is ascending order. Order by can also be used to specify more than one column. These results are primarily in ascending order of children, but within the records that have the same number of children, they're in alphabetical order of last name. The distinct keyword can be used immediately after the select keyword to retrieve only unique rows with respect to the column or columns that you specify after it. Here, only one of each place of birth is selected. In this example, two columns are specified with distinct. So, each row in the result set is unique when you look at the combined data of both columns, that is. To summarise then, this is the syntax of the SELECT statement. The SELECT keyword followed by a comma-separated list of columns. The FROM keyword, followed by a table name. An optional WHERE clause, followed by a logical expression, and an optional ORDER BY clause, with an optional ASK or DESK, for ascending or descending order.